Welcome. In front of me is an Cat S75, and today I will show you an unboxing along with a quick overview of this device. So, without further ado, let's just get into the packaging. Now, I did actually open it up previously, so that's why I don't need to cut anything. Now, right at the front, we have some little warranty, whatever. So just eat that to the side, then get our phone, and then under this, there we go, we get an instruction along with whatever that is, I have no clue, looks like some kind of SIM card holder actually, still not exactly sure, anyway, uh, and our Type-C charging cable. So that's basically all we get in the box. Now. In terms of the phone, let's just peel that off. I did already set it up, as you can see. So that was more of a uh, showcase kind of peel off. So yeah. Anyway, uh, right off the bat, you can see the display right here. Let me just uh, open something that is uh, white. So it's gonna show you the bezels a little bit clearer. Which, there we go. So this is a 6.6 inch display 1080p by 2400 LCD IPS display with 120 Hz refresh rate 76.7% screen to body ratio and a pixel density of 400 now uh, that being said there is one massive uh, downside of this display it would typically be pretty nice uh, but the brightness of this phone is uh, a little bit on a lacking side so this is already maxed out this is as bright as it can get it has no like brightening features so when you have like direct light uh, displays tend to get a little bit brighter but this one as you can see that's as bright as it gets and this is a little bit on an underwhelming side now just to bring another display with or device that has uh, just a little bit brighter display at 600 nits uh, peak brightness which uh, typically I think it's like at 300 uh, this is the Nord uh, CE3 and just to compare these two devices you can clearly see the uh, substantial difference in brightness so both of them are right now maxed out in terms of brightness and you can clearly see which device just radiates more light from it so something to keep in mind now the reason I mentioned this and put a little bit more focus on this specific portion is because this is a phone that would I would argue typically be used in like a work environment and for the work that this is designed this is typically I would argue an outside work environment and therefore you will be in sunlight especially now that summer is coming it's gonna get pretty bright outside in direct sunlight which this display is not prepared for such a uh, brightness so this will make the display be hard to see during such a, a weather where you have just clear skies sun is shining and you barely can see your freaking display so it's a massive problem for a rugged device that is designed for such a environment so I would argue because we do have 120 hertz refresh rate it is a nice addition to have to the display where your animation just look nice smooth snappy but when the cost of it is you not being able to see the display that seems like a bit of an oversight because cool that my phone has a nice snappy animations that i can't see unless you go inside so it's i'm pointing that out because it does seem a little bit of an oversight in, in a design they could have instead of giving the 120 hertz uh, included a much brighter display and considering this device is designed for work uh, or one could argue that it is more of a work phone uh, it would be nice to have a device that can put out some uh, brighter uh, images on on the display higher uh, higher brightness here than what we get that's why I'm kind of focusing on it but moving out of that section let's move over to the cameras and here we have a triple camera setup the main one is a 50 megapixel f 1.8 wide sensor then below that we have an 8 megapixel f 2.2 ultra wide and below that we have a five, uh, five, 2 megapixel macro lens now the last one 
the, the 2 megapixel macro is just an absolute garbage lens and most likely shouldn't be used in any kind of circumstances. And uh, typically the 50 megapixel wide sensor at two times zoom will produce a higher resolution and higher quality uh, picture than the dedicated macro lens. So just wanted to point that out. Now, in terms of the build quality, obviously this is a more of a rugged device. Uh, it has uh, sort of a rubberized surface. At first glance, it might look like there is a case on it, but this is not a case. This is literally part of the phone. Now, the reason I mentioned this is because you have uh, quite substantial bezels that kind of go over the display. The point that you can basically grab them, as you can possibly kind of see me tipping the phone with them, where I can just, yeah, anyway. I just wanted to point that out because the bezels here are pretty chunky. Now, at the bottom, we do have our speaker grills along with our charging port. It is not covered by anything, nor does it have any kind of like flap that closes it. Then on the side, we have our volume markers, power button, and uh, some writing for some reason. At the top, we have what looks like a panic button. That literally does nothing. Yep, does nothing, okay. I assume there is a setup for it, so maybe that's why. Then here we get another button, which again, I have no actual clue what it does. So, yep. And our SIM slash SD tray under this cover. Which is too less, assuming your fingernails are long enough and hard enough to pull that out. There we go. So, we have some weird card in here, which is for this, whatever that is. Anyway, uh, now this tray actually doubles as a SD tray, so you can put an SD card instead, and here you can pop in your SIM card. And that's basically about all in terms of the aesthetics. Now, in terms of internals right here, we are looking at a six gigabytes of ram 5000 milliamp hour battery and 128 gigabytes of storage now processor right here is a dimensity 930 and that's basically all the specs so there we go that's about it now one thing that i didn't mention we also have a fingerprint sensor it's located at the back right here and it does seem to work now uh, using the device uh the power button is a little bit on the outside so the phone does light up without me pressing anything so it is uh, kind of more sensitive to like picking it up i assume something uh but yeah the, the power button being so high it just makes you shift your hand and then shift it back most likely if majority of the people hold the phone like this i would argue uh this this button is like significantly out of reach, which isn't necessarily the best thing. So, there we go. That's basically the entire device. And uh, last thing to mention would be the price, and it comes at about 600 euros, which, that being said, it's a little bit on a higher price. Now, I will mention, I have no idea what this card is for. It could be some kind of like, protection measures in terms of like for your employees if they get hurt or something like that they can just activate emergency and no matter if they have a functioning sim card or not this possibly could function like su a, such a thing which in this case obviously it would add significantly to the value of this device but if we exclude this uh, and just look at the phone itself as a hardware i think it's a little bit overpriced for what it offers it's obviously it's a rugged device though there's a couple weird things like i mentioned with the display they could have swapped the brightness with the refresh rate and this would have been a much better offer additionally uh, I, I guess i'll play like a devil's advocate here um just to give a alternative and kind of my strain of thought so when it comes down to rugged devices i personally tend to think that they're usually like a gimmick and just to explain this rugged devices tend to have more bulk to them which kind of is the point of them i understand 
uh, but the bulk is there to protect the phone which is okay but once the casing of the phone like this one gets banged up you know tossed around gets damaged scratched scuffed and all that stuff uh, yeah you're kind of stuck with it you can't replace it now if you buy a other phone for instance something like this which uh, actually is cheaper this is the nord ce uh, 3 like i mentioned before uh, has a brighter display which obviously for such a thing will be better slap in just buy a uh, tempered glass on here slap it in will be more rugged comes with the case already again pretty rugged in this case the case gets gets damaged scuffed yeeted by a new one and the phone is still pristine same goes for the display uh, tempered glass gets broken take it off replace it uh, here obviously you can put in a tempered glass uh, i think the phone is actually kind of designed around tempered glass considering we do have this massive bezel right here but uh the case you cannot replace it so once this gets damaged you're stuck with it uh, it's gonna be you know kind of agitating you maybe getting caught in your pockets and stuff like that it's not a pleasant thing to have a damaged case uh, therefore i would argue that phones that aren't rugged might be better for uh for rugged purposes just because you can put in a massive rugged case on them it will protect the device and once the case gets damaged you just replace it and you have a nice new pristine case and also the phones that the rugged ones like this one tends to cost more uh, while arguably offering less when you can pay less get a better phone put a in uh, still under uh, under valuing this uh put a like some super rugged case on this make this phone basically be as durable as this and have better user experience so that's kind of what i'm getting at here in terms of user experience it might be more cost effective to go for a cheaper better phone and make it rugged yourself rather than buying one that is designed to be this way now arguably like i mentioned i have no idea what this is so it could add a lot to the value of it and uh, that being said obviously as a most likely employer that is looking for such a whatever that is uh, you will probably obviously know the value of this and have a clear distinction if this phone is worth the money uh, as coming with whatever that is or not i am strictly evaluating the price of this phone as a phone itself and not as a kind of like a package of features so with that being said hopefully you found this video helpful informative if you did don't forget to smash that like button subscribe and thanks for watching